right here we've got a tuning fork near an open closed tube and you hear a strong sound and that basically means the uh, wavelength of the tuning fork matches some standing wave condition in the tube and the what happens is it's nice and strong it's matching and then you lengthen the tube <coughs> and it goes away but then it's strong again when you reach a change in length of 20 centimeters the question is what's the wavelength all right so you might start this one by going straight to your formula for the wavelengths of the different modes of an open closed tube which is 4l over m but not all m but m is 1 3 5 etc. So if you remember or look up that equation, you can maybe think about why you mathematically get it that way. Well, let's draw this one a little bit. It'll help inside and you'll find you can actually do it without equations. So they don't say what mode you're on to begin with. So it's always good to guess the fundamental mode, the longest wavelength uh, mode, which is n equals 1. And if we draw it like that, remember I always plot the pressure. So I like to be at a node here. Uh, where it's atmospheric pressure, so I would draw like that. So that's m equals one. A node atmospheric pressure there because it's open, and an antinode high pressure there at the closed end. So you say that's the original length, and then you say, well, let me draw m equals three, the second mode. Uh, let's see. So for that one, the best way to draw it to see it is to draw this part the same. To say, okay, I got to have. Uh, be at a node at that point, but this has to be longer until that can be a node again. All right, so that's going to be like this. It must be this much longer, and I'll draw it even better. That's a quarter of a cycle. I need a whole cycle here. There we go. Something like that. All right, this is the top of the sinusoid. This is at zero, and then here's the negative amplitude, and then back up to zero. All right. So we had to lengthen it by 20 centimeters to reach another anti or another node there where the uh, open closed tube would again hit a uh, fundamental wavelength or hit a, a standing mode wavelength. So just by looking at that, you can kind of see what the answer must be. This is half a wavelength right here. So the wavelength, if, if 20 centimeters moves you by half a wavelength, it must be 40 centimeters. There you go. Now, if you don't like to do these things by kind of uh, visually like that, we can also uh, do it with formulas. Um, you can say, okay, let's go back to our formulas. We know that here, lambda is 4L. Okay? This we'll call this lambda 1, the first position that works. And then we have lambda 2. And it's confusing, I don't know I'm going to call it lambda 2 when m equals 3. Remember, that's just counting the modes or counting or setting the m's. That's confusing. That's just life. Right? So lambda 2 is uh, 4L over 3. And I know that's bad. Uh, 4L over 3. So you can try to work with the differences of those two. But here's what's tricky about this problem that could mess up your math is, in this case, it's the wavelength that doesn't change. So what we should really say is lambda naught, the given wavelength, those are the same. It's the L's that are changing. So if you, if you don't set it up that way, you can lead yourself into trouble. But if you do set it up that way, then we say, okay, well, let's look at what is L2 minus L1. Let's solve for that. L2, oh, this is 3 lambda naught over 4. Right? And then minus, what is this? This is lambda naught over 4. So 3 minus 1 is 2 lambda naught over 4, a half lambda naught. So we see that, again, the difference in the length, 20 centimeters, is equal to a half the wavelength. Therefore, also that way the wavelength is 40 centimeters. You just have to not lose track of what's staying constant and what is changing. One thing I meant to add on this one is you may recall when we had two speakers, I believe I have a video where I say, well, if we move the second speaker between two distances where you have interference maximum, 
And that delta x has to be a wavelength. So that will always be the case. If you move it to, it's going to always be delta x is a wavelength. But that's because I had two sources that I was moving. That only applied to two sources. Um, in this case, it's kind of the same thing. If you change the length of the two, it is also the case that as you move something a wavelength, that's between that's when the maxima happen. It's just the difference is here the sound is going back and forth. So instead of it having to be the difference having to be one wavelength, the round trip extra has to be a wavelength. So the delta x has to be half a wavelength. So it's really the same reason. It's just this is not for, true for every problem you'll ever see. That's true for two sources overlapping in one D. For the two, it's slightly different. Delta x is half a wavelength. 